Alright, hey everybody. <clears throat> Thanks for being patient with me. I guess I'll start. go ahead and start off with those um, announcements. Okay, first of all, um, as you can tell, I'm very... I have a lot going on this week, so streams will probably be a bit late starting, but I'll um, make up for it by also uh, streaming a bit later, so we'll always get um, two hours. And also, I wasn't able to stream Ludum Dare this weekend, but judging, I think, yeah, ends on the 17th. see, uh, 17th, so that's next Wednesday. So we still need more um, ratings, and I still want to play more, so I think what I'm going to do is we'll do game development Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I'll do Ludum Dare games uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and maybe Saturday. Hopefully Saturday. I probably won't be able to stream Sunday either, because it's Mother's Day here, so... Um, but yeah, when it gets closer to Saturday, I'll probably announce a time. I'll, I'm gonna try to do it same time as my weekday stream. So but anyway, um, so yeah, I guess let's get to game development for today. Now, last stream, I was having some trouble trying to figure out how to like wrap my brain around all the different ways that players will connect to the server and then all the different things that the game will need to do um, so I didn't want to spend forever on netcode like we did on modable chess because I don't really think it's that interesting so I tried to I mean I don't think it's that interesting to watch so I tried to work on it some this weekend and I came to the conclusion that I really just need to buckle down and do like some kind of programming diagram basically for the kind of the flow of the netcode for the entire game just to really understand what I need to do so that's what I've done I had some time this weekend so I started on it uh, yeah. this is um, kind of just UML except I don't know if I'm following it exact but um, basically you start here and then these rounded rectangles are an action that the program will take um, and then the diamonds are decisions and that's basically it these are basically just shorthand so you don't have to draw a huge arrow so when you go to the circle it takes you to here So this one's for the client and then I have a separate one for the server and it's a little more complicated. This is just a note to help me figure out what to, what it is and then this dotted line is basically just a group of actions and once I exit the dotted line then it would also um, stop any ongoing action that's still in here. Um, I think, is there any other notation in here? Oh, this bar, this means that when you reach it, all of these actions can be taken simultaneously, so. Whereas for a diamond, only one action can happen at once. Oh yeah, and this is a, uh, means that it's waiting for this, um, initialization signal event, for example. And that's what these little flags mean. I don't think this would be like where you something sends a signal but I haven't um, I don't think I used that yet. Okay, so n probably gonna be mostly working on this t today. And it will really help understand exactly what we need to code. Okay, 
Okay, so I finished most of like the high level of the um, the entire game, but now we need to like go into most of these actions and kind of go into the more um, details for them. Because for example, this lobby. We know from Mod World Chess that it's a lot more complicated. Okay, so just to kind of explain what I'm thinking, because so there's basically a few ways that you can join a game. So if you want to host a game, like a new game, you would go start screen, create and then you'd just go through here, create the server, and you'd wait for people to join, and then you'd start the game like normal. But you can also create a game, uh, like an in-progress game, loading it from a file. And so that, then in this screen, you would select some file to load, and then that would create the server with that file, and then you'd go to the lobby. And you... Uh, you couldn't, wouldn't be able, for example, if you're learning from a file, you wouldn't be able to edit any preferences in the lobby. And another thing that could happen is like, if the host crashed, but some of the other clients are still waiting for the host to rejoin, then the host would come back in, load up from the file, and then when they get to the lobby, the clients would try to join and the host would notice that, oh, you have, you're already in the game, so go ahead and give me the most recent game state in case the file is out of date. And when that happens, then the host would have to download the game state from the client, and then it would basically go through the loading until, um, it gets into the main game and then the client would connect and everything. And then on the client side, if a client crashed, they would go through all this and then when they get to the lobby they'd see the host is already in game. So they would have to, like they couldn't obviously edit anything in the lobby and then they just load through there. So we can see there's a lot of different I guess, use cases that we have to take into account in the lobby, which I will hopefully get to. I think that, because even though we're trying to just start the game from this play scene, if we don't want to have to rewrite a ton of code, we kind of need to simulate the lobby and everything. So and just go through the motions of all this stuff before. So anyway, I guess we can start working on the sub... sub um, uh, flows and kind of do the server at the same time because the client will probably create a bunch of signals that the server will have to handle. So start game screen. Basically this is going to have a button to create or join so I don't know if I'll deal with that right now. Now in our other game, we weren't sure to have the create or the join screens be separate um, screens or not. But I think, and we had it separate at first, and then we um, combined them together towards the end. We might still do that, although the create game have a lot more information this time because it will have 
things like the number of players and or and load from a file. So well, maybe not number of players. I don't know. But I guess um, we'll handle them separately and just in terms of this diagram. And then maybe the actual program will have them in the same class. But. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'll create the entry point. Zoom in a bit. Save this. So, what is this? Is um, create game. All right. So when we enter. I guess we would just yeah, clear parameters right now. Or maybe not clear, it would actually be like, I don't know, set defaults. And then we'll have one of these bars because we can Basically now we'll enable all the the interface. I don't really know if we need to put in those actions, but why not? Okay, so a couple things. Well, you know what? The, we don't really need to model the interface in here. I was thinking that maybe we should have like an event that's like receive port input. Um, but I think we can do this a better way. So I'll have this parallel bar. So what are the parameters that we need in here? We need the, for the create game we'll have Okay, yeah, the port Password And I guess Save file. Okay, I usually just draw these dirty first and then I try to clean up the diagonals, but nothing's wrong with the diagonals, they just don't look as nice. Okay, so I guess what I should actually type here is get. Oops. be more specific. Okay, and then once we have this information, okay, so it already takes care of creating the server. So we'll also have a cancel here. Okay, these bars are kind of hard to expand. Oh, what 
is that about? Okay. And then the cancel button. We'll just exit the screen, which we can use this X. And when, when that happens, we would exit this, and then this flag catches the cancel, and so it would go here, close the server, and that's that's that. Okay, so now we need another bar like this, and this, when you have a bar with multiple errors going into it, that means that all of these actions have to finish before um, we can leave. Okay, so, and then... I guess we just exit this now. I was thinking that we would maybe create the server in this flow, but we actually do it outside, so. Which is fine. It doesn't make much difference. Well, I guess maybe we should. Oops. Maybe we should do some validation real quick. Password can be anything, but yeah, we'll hash it into a uh, we'll actually hash it into an in integer. Save file. Yeah, well, let's pass that on because it can be. There's no validation for that because it can be null or. I'm trying to. I guess actually. I guess the create game screen should make sure that the save file is valid before we move on, actually. Basically, yeah, if it's empty, we'll just go on. So if we have a file selected, we need to validate it.
Well, that's one thing I just realized is should the password be stored in the file? Probably not. I mean, we did before, but. Probably shouldn't because I mean, it, if you forgot your password, then it'd be a pain to try and reload your game. And so the password will just uh, set it each time you rejoin. Oops, I didn't want this, I wanted a diamond. Okay, so now... It's gonna have to go all the way around. diamond because we'll have to merge these together. Okay, so here this is, um, I guess we're going to say success. I think we're all good here. So, can we move? What's next? Well, the crate server. Basically, well, I mean, it might be useful to read it, but really, we just send us initialization signal. data before it enters the lobby. I don't know, maybe I want to change that actually. But, um, yeah, we can say what this will include. This is a password. Really, that's all actually. So yeah, I'm not sure if we need to set this before we get to the lobby or not, because this data can be changed in the lobby. I think the reason that I put this here now is because the server can't accept any clients until this data is set, which means it can't even accept the host client. Well, I guess we could just have it. Like initialize just a simple one client thing until we get to the lobby. Um, we'll think about that. Okay, so if we go through failure, just goes back to the beginning right here. We don't really want to set the default parameters, actually. So 
so let's add a little decision. Um, I'm going to actually... Oops, that's one annoying thing about this program. Is that if you create a new one, it tends to place it in a place that sticks to previous arrows. But Oh, if you want to know, this is UML let. It's a nice little, very lightweight um, program that's great for drawing these diagrams. Okay, so we'll actually let's move this out of the way. So we'd set the default parameters if... Start game screen. This is kind of. I guess this is pretty much just a title screen, huh? Coming from the title screen, we'll want to set the default parameters. Otherwise, we'll just use what's already there, already stored. And again, I'm not going to put any thing about the interface in these diagrams for now. So, because normally here we need to like refresh all the interface to match the parameters, but. So let's move on to, I guess we could do the join game screen, it's going to be almost the same, so we might as well finish to know exactly everything we'll need to know in this, for the lobby. In fact, I might just copy this. So yeah, we just enter the values and join the server. And then we handle what to do after we join the server in the lobby. Yeah, there's a lot that can happen there. Okay, so here, if you're joining, you don't have a save file, but we can kind of reuse this because we'll need to get address. We don't need all this stuff. But really the only thing here is that it can't be empty. And one part thing about this program is I really wish you could decide where the the text goes on a line because a lot of times it I'd rather it be closer to the start, but Okay, so I think we're done here. Okay, so one thing we do need to do is when the server tries to validate. So yeah, we won't set this here. Instead, we'll set the password. And we'll set default slots. Would just be one open slot for the host client. Yeah, 
then after that we'll create or we'll st start accepting the messages in here and then the host will connect okay so yeah let's do this verification real quick before we jump into the lobby So, verification is actually really complicated right now, but I think it really can be a lot simpler. Um, let's see, where do I... That's not... I should, yeah, I think I named this wrong. It's not verification, it's validation. Basically, the whole point of it is we want to see if a connection that connects to us is someone we care about. Okay. And we actually don't do anything when we enter it. We just need to wait for the signal. information will be included in here. Okay, so we'll have password for the server and the username of the guest. Before I was like trying to have like these client passwords but I was starting to think about it it's kind of useless because the whole point is so that like if the server crashed you could reconnect and nobody would take your spot but um, I think how I'm gonna do it actually is that when you first load up the game for the very first time you'll be able to create a username for yourself and the server will just try to put you back in the same slot if you reconnect. Um, which is basically the same thing as a password, except it doesn't seem like you have to try to keep it secret. So is that really all we need? Right now, we also, like, the server would reject you if you wa or wanted a different game phase than it was currently in. But the way I've done this now is that the game will just, the game doesn't even know what game phase it wants and it will just load the correct thing in the lobby. So the server can basically accept you at any time, except during the results screen, so that's one thing we need to do. something else. Oh yeah, this should actually... Oh, I see what I was trying to do. Because you have the leave mode, which... Oh, yeah, it always does that. Sorry, I know this is unrelated, I just noticed it when I was looking. Shoot, unload assets, and then you'd actually go to E, which is exit. And it would disconnect you from 
this lobby. Or if you just return to lobby, it would put you back in the lobby with the same players. Alright, anyway. Um, so what was I looking at? Yeah, so I think that's really all. We just have the password and the username. it does that it pastes in the old file. So it's a little bug. Okay, so now when we receive this event, so like I said, we need... First of all, we should check if the password is valid. There might even be more we need to please. So basically if this is not valid it's just going to this small x just means it ends this section. I think the circle is the I might be getting it backwards I don't know but that's how I'm going to do it for now. So if it's just an x it's going to end this event, whereas if it's the X in the circle, then you actually should exit out of this whole um, action. But, right, so, connection already verified, then we don't do anything. send a value a signal back saying um, no same thing here is um, game and results screen we don't want to accept any more people at this point because the game is over basically and we're just about to exit back into the lobby. Okay, so here we gotta do a little bit more work. So first thing let's see. on the other side because I think this will be more complicated. So if username associated with a slot okay, let's extend this out a little bit. So now if that's true we have to make sure that There's not already a, um, a connection associated with this slot. If connection already associated with this slot, then that would be a failure. We'd send no. associate this connection. 
asset. Oh, let's just use associate. Connection with slot. Okay, well, there's actually enough room for me to write it out, I think. Okay, and then, yeah, we still need to send the event backwards, but. Okay, so what else do I need to do? I guess the other thing that could happen. Is if there is an empty slot left. Any open slots. So then we would just associate connection and username with first open slot. So if that's true, okay, so both of these are both valid, and if either one of these happen, then we'd send an accept event. And I think, okay, so the only other option here is that, is it going to say else? To be a little a bit more specific. So basically this happens if neither of these are, are true. And that would be another failure. Alright, so both of these will join up here and we'll send okay, we'll actually send two signals here. First signal is the validation success and, and we'll only send it to a new connection. This one is, we'll send it to all connections. And it is, oops, it's allocation. Okay, and this is like a connection change event. state request. Okay, so this is actually... Yeah, this is fine. I guess this should actually... I guess... And connections. I'll have... Just for simple... Simple... What am I trying to say? Simplicity. I'll have this um, action also handle um, the connection state messages and things like that because the server or the clients will need to know how many um, clients are connected for example okay, so this is okay I guess I'll just say this uh, client slot state
like so. And this event will send back. Yeah, the slot ID. And then accepted. stick. There we go. And then here, we'll send, let's see, connection state, username, okay, yeah that's right. And then the slot type for all client slots. And the slot type, for example, can be open, taken, or AI. At least that's what the server knows of. Actually, does the server even need to know if certain slots are for AI or not? Well, maybe, because it would probably want to Actually, I guess we could store the AI in the username. So yeah, maybe the slot types will just be open and taken. So it's not really a type anymore, it's a status. So we also to keep things clean. I'll do another one of these little shortcuts. Okay, so I guess I'll just put R for reject. Oh, and it's I know that it's going to stick to the arrow. Let's go ahead and copy as many as we need right now. We're gonna need four. stick it down here. Now that I think about it, I probably should put this also behind a little shortcut because we're going to send this event from multiple different places. Um, so let's, uh, what should I call this? I guess I'll just call it U for update. before I add the arrow because it's going to stick to it, I know. Please. Thank you. Alright, so now here... So we kind of just copied this, really. stuck to the circle. So this would be validation success or it would be failure actually. Well, let's say rejection. Alright. So another thing that could happen here is we'd receive a, yeah, a slot status a request and all we do here okay well I guess we do need to do one thing oh come on We 
need to check to make sure that we only send this to validated clients. Okay, so yeah, this is fine. Okay, so I guess also I just noticed that to be really, uh, what's the right word? Correct. I need to have a little X at the end of each of these. Um, I think that'll just make it messy, so I think it's pretty obvious that after using this, nothing else happens, so. But here, you actually do need it. So, this would be invalid connection. Which really just means it's a connection that we don't care about because it's not one that's actually taking part in the game. So if it's a valid connection, then we would send this. So I can just grab this U. Oh, really? <laughs> that's, that's all I have to do here. And so the other thing is if a client disconnects. And again, if it's not a valid connection, then we don't care about it. to do well it's a little different if it disconnects okay, well no actually if a client ever disconnects we wouldn't want to wipe them from the lobby even if they are wipe them from their slot even if it, we are in the lobby so I think all we'll just do is Update, or let's say unassociate connection with yeah, this slide. That's fine. I, think it'll, I wish they had word wrap, so I didn't have to do this myself. And then we just call this U. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So the other thing that can happen is we could get um okay so, well I was gonna say that the host could kick a player or change the number of client slots but that only will happen in the lobby so that'll actually be in the lobby part of this So yeah, that was good, good work, I think. So the game state requests. So basically, because for example, okay, well I guess let's wait until we do the lobby to see, because what I was thinking is that the server would need to let clients know, for example, what phase the game is in so that they can know how to load in. And they would also need to have, like, provide the different mods so that reconnecting players can 
populate the lobby correctly. So I guess we'll need to decide Well, I guess if they make a game state request, we just send everything. But inside the lobby, if just one thing changes, we'll have a different event for that. But I think we'll do the client side lobby first. different ways the lobby can happen, or a few different modes of the lobby. So if the host is creating a game for the first time, i.e. not from a file, then they can edit everything. If the host is loading from a file, then all they can do is edit the slots or the different players, in other words. If a client is loading into a new game, they can't actually edit anything, but they can suggest mods. At least I like to do that. I don't know exactly how we'll do that in the interface, but that's another issue. And then if the client is loading into an in-progress game, then I'll... and the host is in the lobby, then they can just press the ready button. Yeah, the ready button's another thing too, because I guess um, that's kind of what I was thinking with this. Oh, where is it? The load synchronization. So for example, if players are all connecting, well, it can happen either from a fresh game or from a save file. But basically, there's no player in the game and they're all in the lobby. Then the game will try to like synchronize their loading times so that if one player has an error, it will kick everybody back into the lobby. But like if some people are already in the game and someone's trying to reconnect, then there's no synchronization so we don't have to wait for everybody to click the ready button. And if there's an error during loading, we would just kick that one person back to the lobby instead of everybody. I think that's how we did it. So I went to unload assets, okay, and it does take you back to the lobby. Alright, so... something like this. So yeah, coming from the title screen, they'll set default parameters. But maybe 
So we should load all mods first. Okay, we actually, and we won't set default parameters if we're loading. from a save file or from an in-progress game. Okay, so we... But we always want to load available mods right away. I guess I should say search. Or what? So basically we just want to get all the information about it. So not really loading them. It's not really good programming music, is it? Um. It'd be more like. I don't know. Um. I guess register. I don't know. I guess I'll just say search and store local mod data. And this can actually happen more times because we can refresh the mod list like we did before. Okay, so I'm just going to write a note. There's no notes on the screen, is there? Oh, come on, please. There we go. This will just be, um, I don't know, editable object. Or, I don't know, this will actually be yeah, parameters. So we'll have the framework mod map uh, content mods number of client slots. I guess there's actually player slots here, but. type of player slot. So here we'd have the AI. So open, take in an AI. And so you, I guess by changing a slot from player to open, you also kick that person. So. And then you also have the random seed for the map generation. Okay, the song's over, so. Okay, so I think that's about it. Wondering how to make the uh, okay. Well, we don't actually need a dotted line here, but if you want to know how to make the dotted line, you just say LT equals dot here. It does that for you? So the default parameters would be content mods none. Number of player slots two. Okay, let's just say slot types. Oops, that's not how you spell that. slot is actually oh, 
will be the host, so we'll have to have a little bit of extra logic for that. Okay, I guess, yeah, we'll set this to AI, actually. So that people can't join unless you want them to, and the random seed will start to zero. So, this is actually not just the title screen, because it's... It's actually... Fresh game. I should probably write a note to make that clear what that means. It's still the dotted line. Fresh game means not loading save file and uh, yeah, host and I guess that's it. Not loading a save file and or the host notes a fresh game. Well, I guess you should set the default parameters if you're a client. Or would you have gotten the parameters from the server already? Uh, probably not. I hate how when you change the view it says that you need to save the files because I don't like seeing those little asterisks up there. Okay, so actually, we'll set the default parameters. Anytime, unless you're loading. Okay, so yeah. If you're not loading from a file, you'll set this. Also, if you didn't just come from a game, you'll set this because you'll use the same parameters as your old game. Okay, so... Not loading a save file. And... Not... I guess, yeah, came from... Create or join screen. Should I do diamonds for this? Maybe. I think that'd be more use, more obvious. Okay. So this is from create or so from the create screen. Probably refresh everything on the server. Okay, yeah. So we 
this was a signal actually. Refresh all. I was about to say send all uh, parameters. Not send, I guess. Yeah, update was the right word after all. Okay, so the other way this can happen. You could change this text, but it's fine, I guess. Maybe go above, actually. Okay, yeah, that's a little cleaner. Okay, except actually, when you're join screen, you want to update all parameters because client does not send this. I guess the easiest way... Oh. Let's do something like this. We could also just say that the server handles this differently from clients. But no, actually, if you're a client, we wouldn't want to send this at all. So, yeah, that's fine. Oops. Actually, if you do have a save file, you'd want to load the data from the save file and then update all parameters. Okay, so, so yeah, this is not correct, actually. Okay, so let's yeah move this around. I'll move put the client side on the other. duplicate actions is not that big a deal. And we can parameters are the same. Because we'll yeah, actually from the client because yeah we'll set the parameters and then we're gonna need to ask the server what the current parameters are. Send the signal. Okay, so we request all. Yeah, we don't 
have to say parameters. Or we don't have to say lobby because it's obvious. Okay, so it's gonna take that arrow, I know it. It's this load parameters from file and set. Okay, so one thing I just thought of is what if it tries to load a mod that you no longer have, or this file is using a mod that you no longer have, we'll just have to make sure we support that, and in the interface it'll say like, mod missing or something, and it won't let you actually play. Update all parameters. So we don't really need to set the default parameters, I mean. It's more like an interface thing. And we're not worried about the interface right now. I think this is basically, I was going to say it might be better to say if this is a host, but um, it implies the same thing. And there's no reason to request the parameters if we're not from the join screen because we know it's going to be the same as what was there before. Okay, so after it updates all parameters... And then I guess these all will join up, I think. So from here, I think I was just trying to, th sorry I got silent there, I sh shouldn't do that, but um, I was trying to think, because what if, for example, the client requests all parameters, but the host then changes something in between the time that they receive them, maybe they get out of sync. So I think what we'll do is just kind of what we did before, that the host will actually send the real game um, preferences to everyone when you're actually exiting the lobby, just to make sure everything is synchronized. And if something weird happens that like, it didn't catch that one of the clients doesn't have a mod, then there'll be an error and everyone would be kicked out anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now once you get to this point, I know in the other game, Modable Chess, we had like an initialization, but I don't think we actually need that here. Because you can enter the lobby before you have any other players. So yeah, you can 
go ahead and start doing input right away. But actually... Okay, well no, we'll do input because... Like I was saying that before. Well, input can be frozen if you're joining an in-progress game, so. So let's see, we'll just need a couple, in order to model that, we'll just need some interruption zones. So L2 equals dot. But, if you're learning from a file, you can have a bit more input. But I think the real thing is that, like, say for a host, if you load into a game, and... So the lobby can kind of change modes from editable to uneditable if uh, one of your clients is already connected in a game and you enter the lobby and then they try to connect to you and you see that they're and they tell you that they're in a now playing game. Actually, we don't even take advantage of that in the validation. I guess that would, how that would work is that when a client connects to you in the play phase, and they would tell you that they're playing. So yeah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so if a client is in the game and you want to reconnect to them. Then you'd enter the lobby, and at first, it would be as if you're in save file mode. But then once you connect to that player, I guess a, a pop-up would come up and say, do you want to join their game, or re-host their game? And then you would download data from them. Uh, Or maybe, actually, I think the better way is that if the... Because that would only happen if the host crashes. So if the host crashes, I think how I'll actually do it is the client will just re-enter the lobby and load in with you again. Yeah, that's, I think, a lot cleaner. Technically, you might lose a little save data, but I think I'll just have the game auto save after every turn anyway. So I don't think it will be that big of a deal. I mean, and if the host is crashing all the time, then there's bigger problems, so. Okay, so yeah, that's how we'll do it. So yeah, I don't need this after all, because, yeah, if you're a, the input won't ever change. So I know we're going to need this to be bigger soon. Because there's a lot of different inputs. Okay, so yeah, we have... The framework mod. Map. Oops, that's not how you spell map. I guess 
it's not technically one map, it's more like the map. This is my title. Like I've told you. Map gen mod. That's not useful that. Because it'd be some mod that would generate a map, could be random. And then content mods. So maybe instead of having just a separate number of slots, the game will have like, I don't know, eight or whatever, and then you can just have a... a none slot. Basically, just the server would treat that as being nothing there. Okay, so this is this will be slot, and, ran and finally the random seed. Which the radio is sure playing some hardcore songs today. Again, I forgot you can only edit the stuff if you're not loading f an in progress game, so. And then if you are loading an in progress game, I think it'll just end right now. Uh, these X's are kind of annoying to work with. Okay. So, load. Oops. Loading a save file or Joining an in progress game. Yeah, so that means you just exit this flow. I think I did have this backwards, it's supposed to be the circle. Because I just noticed that says flow final and the other one says termination, so. That makes me happy actually, because it's much easier to work with those instead of the say X. Uh, I guess I'll just update these while I remember. That's not what I wanted to do. copy before I stick it to this because you know it's going to drag the arrow with it. All right. I forgot to zoom in, sorry about that. So there's actually a couple more inputs I can think of. So 
So we have the reload mods button. These really should be events, maybe. Well, I think I'll, I'll leave these. I mean, technically they should be events, but I think I'll leave this shape to just um, signify netcode events. Okay, and then finally we also have the ready button. Oh yeah, so if you're loading a file or an in-progress game, it's not... You can still um, access the ready button. So how would I do this? Um, I think I just draw a diamond. Looks like we're really going to have to drag this, the text down. I wish it would just stay where it was. Oh well. I drag an arrow like this. So that means you can get it from either side, okay. Actually, I th yeah, you probably can reload your mods even if, like in this state as well, while I think about it. Because you might need to reload your mods in order for the mod to be correct. So I guess I'll just I'll put input here to be more um, clear. Okay, so I guess I will need another bar here. Okay, and again these bars just mean that, oh, sorry about that, um, these actions happen simultaneously. Most of these, I'm not sure if I really need to model it because it's like, it's going to be, or I'm not sure if I need to draw it, I mean, because basically how it'll work is you just send it to the server and it sets the parameter. Maybe I should actually just change this all to be one thing, to be a parameter input. Because Basically the logic is the same, is if if you're the host, you would send this. Oh hey Storm, doing pretty good. How are you? If you're not the well if you're not the host you still update parameter, but the server just doesn't store it. So I think it's safe to I guess just in safe just in case I'll move all this over so that if I for some reason need to use it I won't have to create it all again. Okay, 
so yeah, I did do it right. I still need this bar. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry, Ricardo. Okay, I've got to hear. Let's change this to just be it's parameter input. Okay. I guess I'll move this over to the side to create some more room. What am I doing? Well, the last couple days I've been really having trouble visualizing everything I need to do for the server so sometimes you can create these little diagrams to help so it's kind of programming but it's kind of drawing as well so when we get this input. Yeah, I guess we'll just we send it to the server. Okay. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do two things because we sent it to the server. I guess we'll send it first, it's fine. Oh yeah, an ER diagram is a type. I think technically this is called an action diagram, but okay, so we have type parameter and then we need to Actually, do I do this because yeah, the yeah those um, entity relation diagrams. That's a different type. It's more about I don't know how the programming classes relate to each other in terms of like inheritance. This is more kind of like the program flow. But so what I'm trying to do here is if the parameters are valid I want to kind of disable this button. Well I guess I can okay. I'll do it I think. Right. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we actually only do this if we're the host, now that I think about it. Also, if we're the hosts, we need to disable the ready button right away. Maybe how I can do this is this when we press the ready button. Because in game, we'd actually want to have the ready button be disabled. But that might just be an interface thing. So when you press the ready button, it will check. So it has to be the host. So if host. This means that all players have all mods. Maybe I should be explicit about it. Okay. I was thinking about it might be interesting for players to be able to transfer a mod over the network to other players if they don't have it. But I don't think that's going to impact any of this. So, um, if I want to add that in later, it's not that difficult. All mods, um, at least two taken or AI player slots. That all. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah, it's all selected mods. And the second thing basically just means you're not trying to play by yourself. debugging, I will actually create a way to force the lobby to close, um, which I guess we should model here, but maybe not right this second. Okay, so if all parameters are valid, then we'll send the ready signal. Server. Well, maybe not even do that yet. Okay, I think I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to this. So basically, you just update the parameter, and then we just go back to the parameter input. Do this first, it's simpler. So if the button is clicked, then we would just um, research. Uh, 
it say ready. Research and read local. I wish there was word wrap. should send their mod list to the server now that I think about it. Right at the beginning. Oops. Well. Okay, well this is fine. But yeah, they actually will only send it if we're in an editable lobby. Thanks for stopping by for a bit. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Have a good night. Okay, so I think I'm gonna have to say this a lot. Um, I should just make a note. So an editable lobby. Not loading a save file. Not attempting to join a game in any phase besides lobby. <laughs> yeah, better late than never. I appreciate you for stopping by for a bit. Okay, so I'll just say if it's an editable lobby. And now we have this node, so... So we, the reason I did that is because we actually won't send this mod list if it's not an editable lobby. Um, oh wow, this didn't take any arrows, I'm surprised. Speaking of arrows... Let's go ahead and add some here. Lobby. Okay, and then after we send that update, go here. Oh, did we do anything else? Oh, yeah, I guess we need to loop back. made up. We'll go for about 10 more minutes. And no, this is not out of the lobby. Okay. So, this will affect this all parameter is valid, but So one thing I should do, actually, is if something becomes invalid, 
Then we need to deactivate the ready button. Oh, and also, well, I, this is a big thing I forgot to do. Okay, this, is, this should actually be not edible lobby. But if it's not an editable lobby, then I need to um, get the parameters from the server. Okay, so we'll send. Okay, um, request all parameters. Did I do that up here? Oh, I did do that from the join screen. Okay, so yeah, I guess I did have it right, huh? Um, just pressing re undo here. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add this just so I won't forget. Okay, so we see update. Parameter and also update all parameters. And then update modulus. So right. Um, okay, let's. Um, so now we'll need to check if parameters are valid. So I want to use the green one. And the reason I'll make this more than just a diamond is because we might need to draw this out. I don't really know. I mean, it's not that difficult. Um, I'll tack onto this one. So yeah, actually it's a... F you need to always check if it's valid parameters when you click the ready button. Not just if you're the host. Because, yeah, basically, if the parameters aren't valid, then it just kind of discards this input. Well, I mean, it can. Okay, so actually, I just thought more about it. I need something else here, so if the state ready. So if it's not ready, then we need to try to make it ready. But if it is ready, then we would just um, set ready false. And we'll send a signal to the server. Okay, that's, that's getting Adjusted. Ready. False. So that way the server knows that we're not ready. Oh, we actually only do that if we're a host. Well, we do it if. Oh, no, I guess we do it anytime. I think.
Okay, so... Yeah, so I'll wait to handle that because... So you only send it to the server if you're trying to synchronize the ready button with other players, which only happens... Basically, if the host, or if the server is in the lobby state. Okay, so I, I guess I just thought it through, so I can go ahead and write it. Oh, please. But maybe, yeah, we'll do like a sub diagram for that. Uh, let's see. I don't know if this is correct UML, but this is how I'll do it. Oh, no, that's final. Um. Okay, so if So if server, server, lobby phase, which we would get from getting the game state, which I guess we don't get that yet, so we'll need to Worry about that in a second. If the server is in lobby phase, then. Well, maybe actually, let's do it. You can see that these diagrams are not as simple as they. to make as they seem. It's because you gotta think everything through. Okay, so set ready to. oops. So yeah, and that's all we have to do if the server is not in the lobby phase. Or is it actually? Okay, yeah, this is, I'll do it this way. So send signal. So yeah, that's actually all. Oops. Okay. Okay, so we have to make sure that parameters are valid. And if that's true, then we can set ready to true. So let's actually move this over here, I think. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And then... Text. So if server not in lobby phase, then we're done. So we can put this and we'd actually exit out. I think actually we use this to signify to exit back into the parent. And then we need to 
loop back around. Once we press the ready button and all parameters are valid. Okay, I guess. Um, we do need to loop back, I forgot this. we set it, or if we're set to ready right now, then we just set ready to false. If we're set to not ready, then we check if the valid parameters. If they are valid, then we set ready true, and then if server is not in lobby phase, we can exit and start loading. If the server is in the lobby phase, we have to wait for um, yeah, the all ready message. So we're getting there, but I think there's still more to do. Not to mention we've got to do the other phases as well. But... Oh, I also just stopped here. So check valid parameters, and what I was going to do is if... Ooh, I gotta leave. Um, set ready false if not valid. And then they'll both just join up. I just want to finish this thought. And the reason is because obviously once you reload the mod list you might have deleted a mod so things might not be valid anymore. Okay. I guess here we should also do the same thing. Um, I'll just copy and paste and we'll hook it up later. And now it's, if I can drag this out of the way. Alright. Okay, so that's, I'll stop here for now. Ooh, made up for the last time, so again, thank you for um, being patient with me. Um, I'll, yeah, this this whole week is busy, so I'll probably be a little late pretty much every day this week, but I'll try my best. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, probably about 5.15 or so, and I uh, hope to see you there. All right, thanks again. Bye-bye.